I think real Americans are actually qualified for political office, not just people who dedicate their lives to their personal ambitions. The American people will choose, and Sarah Palin will be part of that choice, just as Joe Biden so has Barack been. So Barack Obama is not a real American because he's pursued political office? No, I didn't you suggest just, that. You just characterized Sarah Palin as a real American in distinction to Barack Obama. No, I think... This is what I'm talking about. Well, no, it's not what you're talking about. Again, you're trying to twist words, and I don't understand, you Michael, just said why real you American I don't Sarah understand, Palin. Michael, why you can't argue on the merits. Why can't you argue on the merits? Oh, I will argue Sarah, on the merits. Palin, Sarah, Palin's Sarah Palin is a woman from Alaska who rose up through political office. She has a family. She has five kids. She has not dedicated her life to her personal ambition. I respect and admire her much as I just articulated my respect and admiration for Barack Obama. I think that's the appropriate tenor for American politics. Okay. I like it that All way. All right. We're going to take a question from the gentleman over there. Uh, Hassan Ibrahim, um, uh, a Sudanese Brit, if you want to call it. I would like to draw attention to uh, a fact that neither uh, Senator Obama uh, or, nor uh, uh, McCain addressed an issue that is very important to me, which is Darfur. I believe that the Sudanese government is getting away with murder, and I believe neither candidate actually addressed the issue enough, and Sudan is the largest country in Africa and the ninth largest country in the world with huge oil, water, and mineral resources, and it's about to basically disintegrate. And if it disintegrates, the effect of that is going to be catastrophic. And I thought it very irresponsible on the part of the candidate for the most important office in the world to ignore such an issue. Thank you. Michael. Obama has talked very, very actively about the need for the United States to pressure and use our carrots and sticks and move the UN plan much more aggressively along and work with, um, work with other multilateral institutions. And I think he just needs to get in the office to be able to, right. to make it happen. Uh, John McCain on Darfur? Has he had a say on Darfur? Has he had I, anything I don't know, to but offer? I think that if Obama is elected in office, he will shy away from the region as a whole. And I think that he's not going to be interested in the least on his list of priorities will be Darfur and, and, and the genocide in, in, in Darfur because I've been following the campaign trail. I was in America until last month. I have actually, I claim to be an observant uh, of, of the, the, the presidential campaign and I haven't ha had actually any clear position of Obama vis-a-vis -vis the Iraqi situation, the Iranian situation, the Palestinian uh, Arab-Israeli conflict, let alone Darfur. All right. Gentleman in the second row there. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, actually, my question goes to both sides. Uh, just I want to ask him that uh, how do you compare, how do you see the uh, foreign policies of both uh, candidates, uh, John McCain and Barack Obama, in regard to Afghanistan and what the mess is going on in Afghanistan? Michael which Sigdor. one is better and why it's better? Michael Sigdor, we know which you think is better, but would you like to enlighten us on what it is? Uh, thank you. It's an excellent question. I think on this um, area, Barack Obama has unquestionably demonstrated um, extraordinary leadership in calling public attention and in proposing precise policies about Afghanistan. I mean, he identified the trade-off, the zero-sum relationship, because we have limited military forces that has happened because of the way in which the Iraq war was prosecuted, how long it took, how long it's bogged down our troops, and the real war that we've needed to fight, which is the taking over, yet again, of the state of Afghanistan by the Taliban. And Barack Obama has been all over that problem. He has been sounding the clarion call for, for months, if not years on it, and I do believe it'll be a major emphasis of his presidency. What's the difference? What's the, what's the real difference? Danielle Pletka, do you want to come in on this? I'm very pleased to hear that Senator Obama has been calling attention to this for months. Um, I can only echo Hillary Clinton's accusation that in his subcommittee and the Foreign Relations Committee, he never held a hearing on the question. This year was his first visit to Afghanistan, despite many opportunities to have gone with fellow senators, both Democrats and Republicans. It is good that he's come to this realization. It's important, and I think that he has shown leadership in the Democratic Party on this question, but there should be no doubt that he's a Johnny-come-lately. Let me just underscore what I think the right answer is of 
having said what I think, uh, what I think uh, Senator Obama's position is, John McCain has said that he would send three additional brigades to Afghanistan. He's also said that we should double the size of the Afghan National Army. Finally, John McCain has said, and I think he said appropriately, that it's not just enough to turn around and say, hey, we need more troops, because more troops aren't always the right answer. We need more troops, and we need a different strategy to fight, because clearly this has gotten out of our hands. I think uh, in that regard, in that particular regard, Obama is more of a Bush strategist rather than anything else, because he wants to take troops from Iraq and send them to Afghanistan and he wants to actually have a surge in Afghanistan and, and shy away from the mess that has actually been primarily created by the United States of America and Iraq, and that's wrong. As an Afghan citizen, which, which arguments uh, are more appealing to you? Uh, as, as far as I have observed, if there is no difference between uh, Bush's uh, foreign policies and John McCain's foreign policies, Barack Obama uh, will be the best choice for Afghanistan. Yeah. It's an important if, though, isn't it? And with that, we have come to the point in the proceedings, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes the Middle East would be better off with John McCain in the White House. Would you please pick up your voting machines? If you want to vote for the motion, that's the McCain camp, represented by Danielle Pletka and Saad uh, Al-Ajmi, please press button one. If you want to vote against the motion, that is the Obama camp, represented by Michael Signa and Hafez Al-Mirazi, please press button two, and would you press the appropriate button now? All right, the results should be coming up on the screen any moment now. There it is. 13... 13% for the motion, 87% against. The motion has been resoundingly rejected. Well, that historic... oh, all, it's, it's quite a record for the Doha debates, I have Great, to say. Thanks. All I will say is thank you very much to our panelists, distinguished oh. panelists, for making their way here. Some of you have come a great distance. We appreciate it enormously. Thanks very much to you, the audience. The Doha debates will be back again next month. Till then, from all of us on the program, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you.